Before we jump into our wrestling talk, let's talk hydration. See, I carry something to drink with me every single place that I go because I am concerned about being dehydrated. It runs in the family. Everything from dry mouth, dizzy spells, fainting, it's pretty serious. And I've tried all the different types of waters and sports drinks. Let me tell you something right now. Liquid IV. That has been the most efficient at keeping me hydrated and doing so pretty quickly. Okay, Liquid IV has five essential vitamins and is two times faster at keeping you hydrated than water alone. And I'm serious, man. Everything from vitamin C to vitamins B3, B5, B6, B12. Liquid IV also is non-GMO, so it's free from gluten, dairy, soy. So for all you folks out there with food allergies, this may be right up your alley. And I know what you're thinking, but how does it taste, Duke? Well, it tastes pretty good. Okay, we're talking my favorite in pina colada. They also have tropical punch, strawberry, new flavors like sea berry and strawberry lemonade. Huh. You can enjoy this stuff, man. But don't take my word for it. I want you to stop what you're doing right now and head over to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling so you get 20% off your entire order. I mean, anything that you order on liquidiv.com. So what are you waiting for? It's time for you to shop better hydration today. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling over at liquidiv.com. Save yourself 20%. Stay hydrated. Most importantly, enjoy life. That's right. Now let's get on with the show. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Welcome back to the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast, the show about pro wrestling and everything else. Like I told you last week, folks, we are still celebrating the seventh year anniversary of the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. And certainly, thank you to everyone who was part of the episode last week. Ronnie, Big Bang, Nicole, all of the wonderful folks who sent in the uh, well wishes, you know, those voicemails. The Hall of Famer, two-time Hall of Famer, Ron Simmons, just really a special episode. And certainly this episode will be no different because in the second half, of this episode, we have a special conversation with Kevin Nasta. Okay, this guy is literally a jack of all trades. He's a pro wrestling promoter. He is one of the folks who helps wrestlers get booked at various conventions. He is also uh, the head cook and bottle washer. <laughs> the dude does it all. Uh, so, a really special conversation just about the business of pro wrestling and, and really something. If you're a wrestler, or if you're someone who's interested in breaking into the wrestling industry or being successful in the wrestling industry in various jobs, right? Not just wrestlers, but anybody. This is a conversation you're going to want to hear because Kevin has some some really unique, interesting perspective. So, But again, that's the second half. Before we get to that, I have more well wishes and voicemails from some of our favorite folks who've been on the show in the past. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to play a couple right now because I really want to get into the conversation with Kevin. I'm just going to keep every week for the foreseeable future. I'm going to play a couple of voicemails because there's just so many that have stuffed the inbox, so to speak. So why can't we celebrate our seventh year? Just keep doing it. You know, who says a party has to stop? So I'll play a few on this episode and then we'll get into the conversation. But let's let's jump into the first one here. Check it out. What up, Duke? It's your homegirl, Marie Shadows here, wishing you a wonderful, happy seven anniversary in this podcasting game. Seven years. That's a very long time. That's a lot of conversations. And I had the honor to listen to most of those conversations. Not all the conversations, but, you know, I do what I can to get more eyes on you, more ears on you, because those conversations that you have are really needed in both the wrestling community and the other communities that you are in. And I applaud you 
for having those tough conversations because not everyone is willing to do so. And by hearing those tough conversations and hearing those stories and the truth behind the stories, because everyone has a story to tell, it inspires me to do the best that I can do with my own work and my own interviews. So thank you for that inspiration. Duke, continue to do the work that you do. It is pleasant. It is wonderful. And thank you for being my friend, my inspiration, and a guidance in this podcasting wrestling world. And cheers, man, for seven more years and seven more years after that and seven more years after that. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Here's something from Spanish, Marie. Tu mierda huele dulce. Well, thank you very much, Marie Shadows. And, and let me tell you something. The, the majority of that message was beautiful heartfelt. I really appreciate it. Uh, that is someone who I have a lot of time, respect, and appreciation for. Marie Shadow is just awesome. She's fantastic. I love having her on the show. Talk to her daily. You know, she has that planner that she created that was so successful. It was number one in her category uh, on Amazon, which is really, really special. So, I mean, Marie, you know, successful, sharp, always innovating, always trying new things out there. I learn a lot from Marie which is why I got to check in with her on a daily basis there. But I got to tell you something, Marie Shadows. For you to come on the Duke show and speak English and Spanish, you think, you, you, you think you're some kind of big shot here showing off, right? Well, let me tell you something. The Duke knows a little Spanish as well, okay? They don't call me multilingual Duke for no reason, okay? Bienvenidos. You see that? Huh? The Duke knows a little Spanish, right? Huh? How about this? Cuáles son vocales? Let me, let me translate that for all of you who are not multilingual like the Duke. What are your vowels? Huh? Huh? You think you can play with me when it comes to Spanish? Check this one out. Huh? Let me, let me, let me lay the best one on the line for you so you understand how proficient the Duke is at speaking Spanish. Okay, check this out. Quién es? Sabido. Saca puntas, por favor. You know what that means? Who is Saturday pencil sharpener, please? Does any of that make sense? Probably not. But Duke Loves Wrestling said it in his confident, deep Spanish voice. Therefore, Duke Loves Wrestling is sticking to it. That's right. Okay, moving on. Happy seventh anniversary, Duke. We hope you have an amazing time. We love what you do. Keep killing it out there. And for the class. Okay. That was from Akia and her mom, Beatrice. You know, two wonderful people. Two people who have been longtime Duke Loves Wrestling supporters. Great friends. They're part of Duke's wrestling crew. And, you know, Akia, she can go either way. You know, some days she's fantastic. Other days she's a little fresh, right? And her mother is even worse. Beatrice is always threatening to toss me up. You know, she she's one of those folks. She's hell on heels. She thinks she's a badass. She probably is a badass. I'm afraid of her, quite frankly. Um, so, you know, but Beatrice can't be threatening me. All right. Because, see, I'm all the way on the East Coast and she's down South. So it's not like she can come and do anything about it. And I have an APB. I got, you know, all points bulletin out there. If Beatrice ever crosses over into the Northeast, I will absolutely go to Australia, the other side of the world, just to stay away from her because I don't even know what tossed up means, but I don't want any part of it. Anyway, moving on to the next one. Hey, 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 this is the Rebel Family Collection, JN Geo. We just want to say to Duke Love Wrestling, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary in your seven years, and we love you guys. Thank you, thank you, and keep pushing forward. Fantastic uh, message there from the Rebel Family Collection. You know, Jay, his son, Gio. If you folks remember River City Wrestling Con, Gio always uh, participates in the competition, you know, cosplaying the wrestlers. I believe last year he was Stone Cold Steve Austin, which is pretty awesome. Just a fantastic family. I had the entire family on the show. You know, the, the father, the mother, the, the, the son, the daughters, the, the whole family on the show. 
uh, last year. And in fact, I'm going to have them all back on the show because that was really, really cool. Can you imagine interviewing an entire family at the same time? It was just really special. Got a lot of time for those folks. Great wrestling fans. Most importantly, great people. And Jay, you still owe me some Spanish food down there in Florida, man. Next time I'm down there, which is going to be soon, uh, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready for the great Puerto Rican food, my brother. That's right. All right. What's next? I just want to give a big shout out to the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. Seven years. What an accomplishment. You always bring the hard hitting questions and you always let people tell their truth. And one of the platforms that consistently does that and does it in the best way. Big shout out to Duke. I love you, bro. Big shout out to Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. Make sure y'all download that wherever your podcasts are found. Big Bang, out. Always fantastic hearing from Ronnie Big Bang Nicole. Don't forget she was on last week. That's a, such a great conversation. People keep letting me know they really enjoyed uh, Ronnie's latest visit to Duke Loves Wrestling. And it's just, she's special, man. She's special. She's a she's a uh, international pro wrestling star. Someone who is so effective at communicating what's going on, you know, what she's done, uh, what she's doing and what she plans on doing in the future. And I mean, really, that's a recipe for success. So big, big fan of Ronnie Big Bang Nicole. And of course, May 13th, 12 p.m., Ronnie Big Bang Nicole versus Sumi Sakai on Candy Attractions presents Drags and Drop Kicks. It's at the Far Out Lounge in Austin, Texas. All right. Once again, May 13th, folks, come on. If you can't be there live, Title Match Network. OK, that's where you can catch it. And it's it's going to be knocked down drag out. I mean, they have a whole card of fantastic uh, pro wrestling, drag shows, live music, the whole nine yards there. It's just a fun time. It's really a fun time there. And, and certainly Ronnie Big Bang Nicole, she's earned her spot in the main event for uh, Uncanny Attractions, Drags, and Dropkicks. So just keep doing what you're doing, sister. That's right. Okay, who's next? Yeah. What up, Duke? This is Terrence Williams, a.k.a. TW, from the Talking About Podcast. And I wanted to congratulate you on the seven-year anniversary of Duke Loves Wrestling. And I love and appreciate Duke Loves Wrestling. You know why? Is it because... You have interviews with legends that I can hear from without, you know, some big agenda going on. No, it's not it. Is it because you show great respect and coverage for women's wrestling? No, that's not it. Is it because you're from Boston? Hell no. You know, that's not it. But it is because you like the smoke, Duke. You are always here for the smoke, and I appreciate that about you, brother. You have no fear, no hesitation about jumping in to any scrap with any quote-unquote IWC personality, and you and I definitely don't always agree on everything. We don't agree on a lot of stuff, but you know what I appreciate is we can have our discussion, debate, argument, whatever you want to call it, and agree to disagree and go on about our business. We need more of that. And that's why your content is consistently top shelf. Keep up the great work, my brother. Congratulations on seven years of Duke Loves Wrestling. And the rest of us are just trying to get on your level. Let me tell you something. You talk about top shelf. Certainly, Terrence, my man, TW, that, that is a, a fantastic human being right there. Really appreciate that, dude. And listen, man, you can flatter me all you want, but you know... Damn well that you are the man. I mean, this dude is legitimately, first of all, he has the the Talking About podcast, which I encourage everybody to check out. It is a fantastic listen. You know, it's digital, it's video, so you get to see my man um, and, and all the fun expressions that he makes as he's talking about everything. Uh, just a really, really sharp dude, man. I, I, I got a lot of time for uh, Terrence. And He's being very modest. I mean, this guy is a, a producer for ESPN. So he's not some ham and egger. He's not some uh, flavored malt beverage nonsense. He doesn't need to pull up his skinny jeans because he doesn't wear skinny jeans. This is top shelf. Okay? This is, this is don't stand in line. Get the velvet rope ready. Straight to the VIP. Okay? 
You get the top shelf, you pour it for the man, and 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 you bow as you pass it to him. That's what this is about. Okay? That's who Terrence is. I can't speak for some of these other humanoids out there. You know who you are, right? But one thing about my man Terrence, talking about podcasts, okay? This dude legitimately is one of my favorite people that I have ever interacted with in this entire IWC space. Consistently, just an adult, top shelf, grown man, doesn't take anything personally, understands, as you just heard him say, we can disagree on anything, and that doesn't mean we have to be disagreeable. You know what I mean? We can move on and laugh about something else afterwards. That's just the way it is. So if if more people had that type of maturity and that type of focus where you don't have to necessarily agree on every subject, but you can respect somebody's grind and you can find ways to collaborate. If if we all could get to that space, can you imagine how successful we'd all be together? It's It's just, it fascinates me. I don't understand why there's such a lack of maturity, especially within the quote unquote IWC, the internet wrestling community, and especially for these these digital creators and these quote unquote media folks. You know what I mean? There is such a lack of maturity. They there is a a a, a emotional challenge that a lot of them have where everything is personal. If you don't agree with what they assume, it's not even what they know, what they assume to be then you must be a terrible person. And if you tell them directly, hey, I don't think that makes sense. They act like you just literally told them that their mama's cooking is terrible. You know what I mean? They, they want to literally take it to the mattresses in their own weird IWC streets. You know that none of these folks are real tough guys, but they want to take it to the mattresses in the digital space over that, which is just embarrassing. So uh, it's it's refreshing when you're able to communicate with people like Terrence, Marie Shadows, the Rebel family, Ronnie Big Bang, Nicole, who's a pro wrestler, so she's in a different class in, in her own right there. But it's 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 fantastic to communicate with great people who are adults. Again, no skinny jeans, no flavored malt beverage, top shelf. That's the way it should be, Jack. Okay, no flippy dippy peanut butter skippy over here. Okay, we put on uh, woo Ric Flair classics with the way we go about our business. You got that right. Again, Duke Loves Wrestling on Facebook, on, on Twitter, Duke Loves Wrestling at gmail.com. Anyone who wants to continue to send in the well wishes, you're welcome to. I'm going to stop it for now. You know, it, like I said, we'll, we'll just keep playing them each week because certainly seven years to be podcasting for seven years straight with very few interruptions. I, again, I, and I, and I actually, it's funny, I did the math. I'm 20 shows ahead of where I should be for a show that that happens 52 weeks a year for seven straight years. I'm actually 20 shows ahead. And the ironic part is I've taken four weeks off in seven years, right? There have been four weeks where there wasn't a uh, fresh episode of Duke Loves Wrestling, but I've made up for it almost threefold, basically, right? I mean, you know, you, you're getting uh, extra episodes each time there. So to be 20 ahead is is really just impossible, but I've been able to do it because of you and because I, I appreciate and respect all of you listeners. I appreciate and respect all of the guests that have ever been on Duke Loves Wrestling that will continue to be on Duke Loves Wrestling. One of the greatest compliments that I receive is when guests make it clear that they would love to be back on. You know, that was the case with last week with Ronnie Big Bang Nicole. It was the case with Ron Simmons. They want to come back. And that's tremendous. You know what I mean? That means we must be doing something right here um, because I'm going to tell you, in this landscape today, a lot of these wrestlers, they're sick and tired of these these quote unquote media folks, these, these podcasters and what have you, because a lot of you are just not professional. And like Terrence just said, a lot of you try to make it more about yourself as opposed to making it about the guest, right? So why would a person ever want to come back on your show if you're just going to sit there and try to get yourself over the whole time? That's not the way it should work. And that's not what I believe in. I ask a simple question and then I shut the hell up. So the guest has all the room in the world 
to express themselves. And what's interesting is within that, you get a complete thought. They take you in places where they don't normally go. They end up saying things that they, they have never said anywhere else, at least recorded. That consistently happens on this show. But that's because I, I lead with respect for the guests and I lead with respect for you listeners. And because of that, we, we literally have so much exclusive content that comes from our guests, people who have been Ron Simmons. How many years has he been in the wrestling industry? How many years has he been doing interviews? Right. He's been wrestling almost as long as I've been alive. So the fact that we can get fresh content out of him talking about his Jerry curl hair <laughs> or the fact that he opened up about his take on the um, the NIL. Right. The, the next in line program, in the WWE and the NIL in general. Um, that's that's tremendous. That's tremendous. We can get fresh, te- fresh content like that. But again, it starts with being top shelf. It starts with treating people top shelf. It starts with bringing on top shelf guests. So that's what I'm dedicated to do for you. And we're going to keep this train going. With that said, we're going to take a quick pause for the cause. And when we return, class is in session. Our man, Kevin Nasta, with some fantastic information for anyone who would like to be in the pro wrestling industry. And I'm not talking just hanging around or calling yourself media. I'm talking about getting a job in pro wrestling legitimately. Kevin has some incredible insight that I want to share with you. You do not want to miss this. We'll be right back. I want to remind you to check out Zencaster, Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R. That is my favorite program to use for all my recording needs. And the great part is not only do they have audio, but they also have video options as well. So whether you're video conferencing, podcasting, just catching up with friends and loved ones, you definitely want to check out Zencaster. They have uh, paid subscriptions. They also have a free version, which I'm actually using right now. Transcripts, the whole nine yards, and even... Get this, Zencaster has started to do hosting. So for all you podcasters out there, if you're looking for a host for your show, please consider Zencaster. You will not regret it. I'm telling you right now. Once again, Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R. Made on Zencaster. That's right. Hey everybody, this is Kevin S. Nessa, president and founder of Damage 365 Radio and head booker of Goddesses of War Women's Wrestling, and you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. You know, folks, it's it's really something special when you talk to a person who legitimately is a walking, talking, living, breathing Swiss Army knife. You know, somebody who is able to be useful in various different functions and somebody that people actually depend on and respect and appreciate because they're able to be useful in different functions. And certainly that is the case with our man, Kevin Nasta here. It is a pleasure to have you on Duke Loves Wrestling, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, heard a lot about you and uh, I figured I'd jump on the opportunity to, uh, to hook up with you with a lot of things coming up and, uh, you know, and your connection with Mission Pro and, you know, our inspiration to doing what we're doing with Goddesses of War. Well, listen, that's high praise, and I appreciate that. And certainly, shout out to Goddesses of War, which you're going to be talking a lot about. And shout out to our friends at Mission Pro. Definitely, um, folks, they got a lot of time for on both fronts there. But before we get to that, Kevin, I got to ask you directly, and, and I don't know if you've ever been asked this before, so this would be this might be an exclusive here. What the hell is wrong with you that you have your hands – in so many different things, and yet you're able to to juggle it all and and be so proficient at what you do. Uh, everything from from putting together entire wrestling cards, you're helping people get booked on conventions. Uh, there's a lot of other things that you have going on that um, you know we may or may not talk about, but it all centers around you helping people continue to put food on their table and continue to keep their brands alive. I mean, what's your problem, man? How the hell are you able to do all this? 
Oh, look, it takes a lot of dedication and time. Um, you know, when, when the pandemic first hit, uh, we were all forced home to, you know, kind of find ways to make ends meet while we were at home. And, you know, and we did that. And, you know, I, I had a sit down conversation with my wife and I said, Hey, look, you know, at that time I was working in finance. I said, look, I can sit in someone else's office and help make them money, or I can sit in our office and help make us more money. Um, you know, I feel like the decision was kind of easy. She did as well. When uh, when things started to partially reopen, I was able to go out, bring talent to stores to do signings. I was able to get them to do virtual signings, whether it was me conducting it or other vendors that I work with across the uh, Northeast. Uh, it just it was just a, a perfect uh, mix of opportunities there. And then, you know, I was confronted uh, by the guys of Titan Championship Wrestling to relaunch their women's program, uh, a program that I helped them book four shows for prior to the COVID pandemic. And they were running right up to the point uh, where we were about to be shut down when they were doing outdoor shows to make it a little safer. Um, they were all about sanitizing, wiping down the ropes you know, between show between matches and things like that. So um, <clears throat> when they approached me about, you know, goddesses, I was like, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, no problem. And, you know, of course, my wife's looking at me like I got three heads because she's like, all right, how the hell are you going to do that? This, that. But um, <clears throat> look, it's just it's just prioritizing. Um, it's one thing uh, I went to school for was uh, business and organizational management. And one of the main things that they teach you is how to prioritize, you know, get as much uh much as you can out of time management. And that's, you know, that's what I do. You know, I got my own business, which is uh damage 365 promotions. I I'm a talent agent. I bring, um, you know, rep pro wrestling, UFC, MMA, cinematic universe, TV universe. I bring them all over the United States, um, for bookings, for conventions, for store signings, book signings, whatever it is that, um, I'm able to get involved in or they're needed at. I, and then, you know, the, the goddesses of war program is something that we've run every couple of months. And uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's an all women's program, exactly the way mission pro started, but we're dedicated to keeping, you know, all women's matches, uh, all women's staff from in the ring to outside the ring. Um, you know, I'm, I'm basically uh, myself and the owners are the only male uh, people involved, but we're really not involved. We literally uh, just sit, and in the back and watch whatever we put together unfold and, and hand out those envelopes. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just all about, um, just time management. You know, I'm, I'm old school, you know, I got a notebook and I sit there and I, I write everything down in detail. And if I have an idea, it goes in the book. If I'm able to use it, it does. If not, it gets put somewhere else in the book for later use. Uh, I just, um, I'm not huge on the digital era, but I'm able to utilize uh, social media and as much as, um, you know, computers as possible involved in what I'm doing. But, you know, it push comes to shove. It comes down to getting on the phone, um, making those phone calls, making those text messages, sending those emails, uh, just trying to get, uh, you know, new fresh faces out there in the ring or at a convention and uh, just not roll out the same old, same old. Um, which, you know, a lot of people get stuck in that rut of doing, they get comfortable. They bring the same people around to the same shows over and over again. And, um, then they can't understand why they can't grow and you got to take chances. You know, you need to spend money to make money. You need to take chances. If you're, if you're not progressing, you're, you're, you're standing still. So it's, it's just, you know, I'm a big walking cliche at this point. You know, it, and it all makes sense now. You said organizational management. That's what you went mm -hmm. to school for. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a poli side guy. I spent a lot of time in state and municipal government. But uh, when I do my consulting, it's usually centered around organizational leadership. And whether that be for government or private companies, public companies, what have you, literally teaching managers how to rebuild their staffs, recognize talent from within so you don't always have to go out and and bring somebody from the outside, spend all that time and effort into training them and getting them pro proficient, like work with the talent that you actually have and promote them up before you bring in somebody else, stuff like that, and, and how to treat yep. people right. And I, I say all that because this is why you stand out to me, because in every aspect of what you do, we can see all the elements of that. 
And I find it fascinating that you also have a finance background because that means you understand how to manage the money, which is paramount if you're going to be somebody who is managing businesses and managing and and developing brands. I mean, that is- I also have 31 years of retail management experience prior to that. Love it. I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming, Kev. Listen, Kev- I, I was a, I was a flagship store manager at a at a at a, uh, a very famous flat, uh, mall store, and there's something about people who worked in retail who survived all the holidays, especially you know Christmas and things like that, who had mm-hmm. to manage the back room, who had to keep their numbers up, who had to deal with the economic downturns, and you still had to find a way for your for your uh, LY to be behind your current year reach your goals, all that good stuff there. So you're telling me that you got that in your background as well. Yeah. I mean, um, I was kind of born into it. You know, my mother worked for American greetings, um, Carlton cards, the greeting card company. Um, yep. and I was kind of forced into it. Yeah. My mother would drag me to work when I was a kid and, uh, get that free child labor <laughs> and, uh, you know, stock and shelves, taking in orders. Um, her store was in downtown Manhattan on maiden lane. So, you know, we'd, trek into there by ferry, walk over from the ferry. Um, you know, you know, those old school Manhattan buildings. So the basement, it was probably about six inches wide that, that as far as the stairwell and it'd be sliding down 200 pounds of uh, paper product down a board uh, across the stairs. And I'd be on the bottom catching it and stocking. And so I was kind of like, you know, introduced to it at a very young age. And my first management experience uh, was working at a video game company called Funko Land, which is uh, now owned and operated by GameStop. I miss it, uh, man. I miss yeah. it. Oh. Uh, that, now, you're talking 1992 to 1995. Um, you know, I started off as a game advisor, and within six months, I was an assistant manager. Um, I was there for about 10 months. I just turned 18 in November of 93. And literally I was approached like, Hey, you want to be the general manager? The, uh, the manager of the store wants to go back to Brooklyn where he lives. And I literally lived around the corner from the store. So I was like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, and I was there for a couple of years until, uh, there was rumors of the, of the company being bought out by at that time, electronic boutique. And, I, um, you know, gave my paperwork, my two weeks notice we left. And, uh, within six months that store was closed and, uh, within a year and a half electronic boutique bought them out, including a company called Babbage's. And then, uh, about eight months after that GameStop bought them all out. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I have the greeting card, uh, background I've worked for big box stores, you know, like Lowe's things like that. Um, I also work in seasonal Halloween for the spirit and halloween city i do that every now and then i did it this past season so i always tell my employees when we have our uh, preseason meeting i said look if you can make it through the seasonal halloween and you get to the end when we're closing up the store packing it up sending it out for next year and you can survive you can survive working in any retail job uh that the, anybody ever approaches you with because this is this is going to test uh, every moral fiber in your body to not want to kill somebody uh, when you work at a Halloween store, because Halloween, the week of Halloween is like Black Friday every day uh, leading up to Halloween. So it's, um, you know, it's it, it's trying. It's uh, it tests your patience. You t- it tests your people skills. Uh, but I'm able to use that to help uh, my people skills and how to communicate with staff, how to communicate with customers, vendors. Uh, also, you know, organizational management, big, big there. How to get the square peg in the round hole. How to utilize as much of your floor space as possible with merchandise because if you're not using it, you're you're losing money because that product is not on a floor. So it's it's literally the same thing. It's like going to a convention and you have a t- you have this rectangular table. All right, how much can I get on this table? How can I display it without it being overkill, but at the same time getting everything on that table I need to make some money. And for all of you listening right now, especially those of you listening who work in retail or who have worked in retail, Kevin is is pointing out something so important. And it's something that I say all the time and I actually recommend regardless of the industry um, that I'm in where I'm providing services. It's like, hey, if you can find people, especially people who are retail managers, bring them in because these are the folks who literally have weathered the storm. 
They've dealt with the busiest times. They've dealt with the slowest times. They've had to make decisions about uh, when to let staff go because they just don't have the money to keep them on, you know, especially when it comes to seasonal stuff. Exactly what you said about the Halloween store. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's Black Friday every day leading up to Halloween. So folks who can who have that experience can handle just about anything and they work the best in high pressure situations. So, man, I'm learning a lot about why what you do is successful because look at this background man i mean that's it's it's solid it's so i i wonder about something i'm gonna i'm gonna take us off the beaten path for a second but it's all related (laughs) because when i speak to people who try to promote wrestling shows Mm -hmm. or you know they try to start their own promotion what have you everyone has you know these grand ideas And a lot of folks make the mistake in the very beginning, especially where they're spending a lot of the money that they have saved up to do this thing. They bring in this one and that one from all over the place and and, and what have you. And then when we get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten shows down the the road here, the money's dried up. And part of the reason why the money's dried up is because they spent too much too soon. They didn't really, really scale it out properly. How does someone like yourself deal with the challenge of flying people in from all over the country? Because looking at the the folks who you book, they're not all right there in your state. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of travel involved in this as well. How do how do you balance the cost of that? Um, It's you know, being in retail, you you learn and appreciate the meaning of the P and L. I mean, it's. you know, if people don't know what that is. That's profit and loss. Uh, I use Microsoft Excel. I'm a little old school there. I use Microsoft Excel. I make my own P&L. Everything that goes into the company goes in there. Anything that gets taken out and spent comes out. And, you know, obviously at the end of the day, you want to be in the black, not in the red. And um, look, you know, I made my share of mistakes back in 2012 when I started this. And I, I started as a podcasting company going to prom, uh, to conventions to promote and market uh, the podcast and, you know, led into bringing in a wrestler to kind of like make us a little bit more legitimate at the table by having a wrestler sit with us and, you know, doing interviews and things like that. And it led into us just bringing in talent only. We phased out the podcasting um, around 2021 and uh, I, I give credit to what credits do. Anybody who does podcasting, um, you know, you become a slave to your labor. You know, you it's it's a love it's a love affair. But you know, when you're like, I got to record. It's Wednesday, you know, seven o'clock, and you know, your wife's like, No, I want to go out to dinner. Nope, sorry, hun, got to got to record. Bye. You can close the door. Um, you know, it becomes trying after. So anybody who is able to do it, keep it going. I give you kudos because I know. Uh, what goes into it and the editing and everything else. Uh, we did a live show, so there was no editing. So if I screwed up, it was uh, it was live for everybody to hear. And, and trust me, we we did screw up a lot. But uh, it made it more fun and more real. Uh, as far as uh, wearing multiple hats, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, you become the travel agent, you become the negotiator, you become the booker, you become the uh, the hotel booker. Uh, you become the the, the ground transportation. Uh, you know, the the, the food provider. Uh, everything, but uh, if you're organized, you, you can do it. If you're jumping into this because you think it's a cash grab, um, you're you're gonna go down burning in flames. You you need to be organized. You need to have uh, knowledge of a P and L, the the value of money. Uh, we made mistakes at the beginning. You know, we spent a little too much because you know we wanted to be the first to bring certain talents out. You learn from that. You don't need to be the first. You just need to be the best. Um, yeah, yes. Ricky Bobby says, if you're not first, you're last, that's not really true in this industry because, uh, uh, you see a lot of people booking the same people all over the United States. So that, that philosophy kind of gets thrown out the window, but you want to make sure is that when you're with that talent, you take care of that talent, you treat that talent like per like people, not merchandise. You treat them like they're the center of the universe. Um, you treat them better than family. That's what I always tell them. And uh, when they go home, they have a smile on their face and they always know that when they pick up the phone and they see your name, that they know it's going to be a good experience. I love it. I love I love that whole history that you just told us. And you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we're still in celebration mode 
seven year anniversary of the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. And seven years is a long time to podcast, but it's it's a short yes. amount of time in life. And I can tell you, man, in seven years, I lost count how many promotions came and went, uh, how many how many podcasts came and went for exactly the reason that you just said. Yeah. You know, and, and what we're talking about here. Folks are spending too much too soon, not scaling it properly not paying attention to their profits and their losses and making sure that, <laughs> you know, that that's balanced properly. Um, yeah. And it's unfortunate because at the end of the day, pro wrestlers, you know, the, the talent themselves, it's a, it's a very unstable environment and you hope people are going to be around tomorrow, but you never know with these promotions. And that's why what you are doing with goddesses is so important because you're providing a stable environment that people can work in and people enjoy working there and, and people enjoy putting on a great show and what have you, because they know, like you just said, they're being treated like human beings. They're being treated with respect. Uh, there is an expectation. Everybody has to show up and perform and, and do their best. But at the end of the day, you're going to compensate them um, and, and make sure that they understand that they're appreciated. And that's all anyone asks for with any industry, with any job, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um not only just not only a professional atmosphere and uh but it's a safe atmosphere. That's that's what I'm big on. Like any any dope can run a wrestling show and we've seen it. We've seen we call them the uh, the tax return wrestling federations where they get their tax return, they they pop up, they do two shows and they disappear. Um this is a safe atmosphere. The locker room is all women, okay? We don't want guys going in and out of it. I don't care if they're agents. I don't care if they're owners, whatever it is. That door is closed. That door doesn't open until they come out uh, or they go back in. We have sc- we have security everywhere. We have uh, talent from Titan Championship Wrestling working the Goddess Show as security and uh, extra help around to, to help out whatever needs that they have. So everybody is a team. Yes, it's a women's division, but the, even the guys are there to help at any point that if it's needed um like i said we have security we have um we have the women behind the broadcast booth in the ring ring announcers we have t- our ticket takers like stuff like that so you know it needs to be a safe atmosphere they fear they, f- uh, they everybody fears the unknown so when you walk in a building and you see that there's security there that you know, when you walk in that locker room, you're you're not going to have a guy come walking in. You know, I had the last show. I had to go in the locker room. Literally, I was knocking on the door for like 10 minutes. Someone came out. I'm like, do me a favor. Walk around the entire locker room. Make sure it's safe for me to walk in there. I said, I don't care how long it takes you. And then they come out. I said what I had to say. And I was like, all right, good luck. Bye. And I left. And that was it. I was like, there's no none of that unexpected nonsense. Um, you know, I want these girls to be able to work, go there go home and say, you know what? That was a great experience. Uh, I felt safe. Uh, you know, yeah, great show. I mean, that's, that's priority. Uh, at the end of the day, we had a great show. The fans loved it, but at the same time, I want every single talent from inside the ring to outside the ring to know that they're safe working in that environment. So, so now that you have everybody, you know, with a strong understanding that that you are a a reputable business owner and operator and what have you here for folks listening especially you know folks that they're trying to figure out what to do with the kids man summer vacation is upon us here we're already in may what do you and your and your business partners and what have you what do you have coming up from now going through you know let's say late summer early fall um, all right, so like this May, t- this coming May twentieth, uh, which is in what seventeen days, <clears throat> uh, at the time of this uh, recording, uh, we have uh, a women's show in Aberdeen, New Jersey, at the Highline Arena. We're going to be the first show of a double header. So, uh, Wrath of the Goddesses is our show, and it will be followed by Rise of the Titans, which is after us. Uh, we have a, a really good show lined up. Uh, former NXT star Mila Moore will be on the show. Jasmine Allure will be signing autographs. Uh, we have six matches in total. Uh, so, you know, tickets for that. You're going to go to Titan Championship Wrestling.com 
and uh, check that out. It's going to be a great show, and it's uh, going to lead into our July show, which uh, we haven't announced the date yet, so I won't I won't spoil it there. But there will be a July show uh, called Battle of Athena. Uh, that that show is pretty much like eighty five percent booked because I'm already that far in advance with booking shows and the talent on it. Uh, that show is going to be uh, very, very good as well. We're going to try to, you know, every show one up the show before um, our plan is to have another show in um, October called hollowed ground. Uh, it'll coincide with obviously Halloween, things like that. And then our final show will be in December, which is going to be. And if people don't understand, uh, this is this is a very Greek mythological themed company. Um, I, I, <laughs> me personally, I do have an associate's degree in Greek mythological studies, so this is fun for me doing it this way. But I didn't start it this way; I just continued the trend. But. Um, our December show is called the Nike games. And if anybody doesn't know the history of the word Nike, it's spelled like Nike N I K E. It's the history of where the Nike brand got its name. Uh, Nike is the goddesses of games. And that's where Nike got their name for their sneakers. But the Nike games, which is in December uh, is going to be a survivor series format, three on three tag match tournament. So um, <clears throat> that's going to be sometime in December. And then we flip over into the new year where in February we had the D365 Cup and that kicks off our season, you know, and so far and so on, on, on going in. But we're already, um, already, we're already locked in for the rest of the year as far as uh, dates. And, uh, you know, obviously you just got to book the, book the shows one at a time. And, um, you know, and then in between all that, you know, me doing what I do at, at conventions all over the United States, but as far as like goddesses is concerned, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's a top priority. You know, it's, it's something I totally believe in. I, I, I totally believe in the all women's platform, uh, not just women's women wrestlers, but women in wrestling, uh, in the business of wrestling. Um, we've had different <clears throat> broadcasters come in and, uh, Candace, Candace has been our main broadcaster. We've had a color, couple of different color commentaries from Kimmy Sokol on the first show. And then this show we have Marie shadows and a returning Riley Shepard, who's uh, slowly uh, coming back from her second MCL surgery in this year. Um, you know, we're giving everybody an opportunity, not only because if, you know, people have availability issues from month to month, you don't know what, what's going on. They could be going to a wedding. They could have other obligations. So we don't want to be stuck to be like, Oh man, you know, we have nobody. So we're, we're rotating people in and out to see, you know, who's comfortable doing it, who wants to continue to do it. And it gives us flexibility. You know, God, there's going to be, I'm sure a day where Candace can't work. So we have multiple people that can step in and, and do the job. So we're, we're happy there. Um, you know, my philosophy as far as booking is concerned is, yeah, I can book the same, you know, nine uh, girls that work in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, that every single person books, or I could give people opportunity from outside the states to come in and make a name for themselves, you know, in the, in the Northeast platform. Some girls have never, you know, we just had, we had Miss a Kate. You know, yeah, she's one half of the NWA Tag Team Champions right now, but it was literally her debut here in New Jersey in the Northeast. She, she only really worked at it in the Midwest or wherever the NWA brought her. So, you know, she got to make her debut here. We've had, um, we, we've had the, the, the fortunate pleasure of being able to debut a lot of talent over the years. And uh, you and I spoke off the air earlier about, you know, 2015, um, I met a young lady online uh, called Thunder Rosa. And she lived on the West Coast. And, you know, she was fairly well known on the West Coast. You know, she's, she's got a very big personality and uh, good internet following. And um, I kept reaching out to her. I said, hey, you know, we want to bring you to the East Coast. Let's do a convention, you know, a couple of conventions in New Jersey, New York, you know, we'll get you out there. I'm, you know, I'm sure it's going to help. And she, no, 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 nobody's going to know who me, who I am. You know, don't don't waste your money, blah, 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 blah. You know, it took about a good eight months 
to get her out here. And then we finally got her out here in 2016. And, um, uh, you know, it, it blew up more than she ever dreamed that it would happen. I mean, her fans followed her to New Jersey. They followed her into New York and they came out and she had lines for hours while she was here and, you know, smile from ear to ear. And she, you know, I mean, we, we all know where her career has gone now. I mean, she's done tremendous things in the wrestling industry. Uh, one of the most popular, if not definitely not um, most familiar faces in, in professional wrestling all over the world. And, uh, you know, that stuff like that is what we like to do. And we've done that, you know, with, with talent like Nyla Rose. You know, we brought her to conventions 2015 and 2016. She really wasn't a household name. And then, boom, you know, she's a former AEW World's Women's Champion. She's still with the company. You know, we've done work with Deanna Perrazzo uh, as far back as 2015. Tasha Steele's the same thing. Uh, we worked with the the current and reigning NWA World's Women's Champion, Camille Brickhouse, when she was just re- she was wrestling in the indie scene uh, doing the the lingerie football league gimmick as Camilla Kane, and we brought her to WrestleCon back in 2018 in New Orleans, and that was her convention debut. And now, obviously, look, her career has gone, you know, great. And you know, we've we've had the the fortunate pleasure of of you know picking people and bringing them to conventions to help them network and do stuff, and their careers have. Uh, have really taken off. And another example of that is somebody who has been in the, in the media of late a lot, Jordan Grace. Uh, we worked with Jordan Grace when she was 18 years old. She was living in Texas back in 2015. She actually debuted at a convention, the same convention that Thunder Rosa debuted at. So um, their careers have definitely have taken off. I always like to say, you know, joking around, hey, 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 I have the golden touch, you know, look at me. I can, all these girls made it on TV. I mean, look, it's easy to say that now, but you know, there's a lot of people that we worked with that haven't done anything uh, since the day we brought them out. But you know, it's just a, a joking thing, but you know, it's like watching my kids grow up. You know, I don't have kids. I have dogs, you know? So to, to see stuff like that, it's like watching my kids grow up and, and, you know, make something of themselves and go out there and take the world by storm. So it's a very gratifying feeling, uh, especially when I'm walking down the aisles of Walmart and there they are hanging on a peg in a, in a form of a wrestling figure. You know, you don't think I get goosebumps? Well, and, and I think that you being the professional that you are, you're showing people very early in their careers that it is possible. It is possible to do business with somebody who's very professional, treats you with respect, um, again, you know, all you have to do is provide excellence, be the best version of yourself that you can be as a performer. But in return, you get, you're going to be treated fairly, paid fairly, etc. Yep. I think that goes a long way with the success of a lot of the names that you mentioned, because that is a great comparison point where maybe they walked away from opportunities because they weren't treated the same way. And they knew I don't have to put up with that because there are people like Kevin Nast out there who do good business, you know? So, so I'm going to give you a lot more credit than you're giving yourself on that front there, brother, because I, I do think it matters. Um, we have the river city wrestling con coming up mm-hmm. June 10th and 11th down in Jacksonville. And you know, those are, those are friends of ours. We, we love the river city wrestling con and all the great stars that appear every year. Some of your clients are going to be at the River City Wrestling Con, right? Yeah, um, that's June tenth. We're and June eleventh. We're only doing June tenth. Um, that trip is usually uh, a prelude to a little mini vacation. That, uh, that my wife doesn't really come on with me to many of these trips unless it's a particular town that she's never been to that she wants to go to, <laughs> like New Orleans, but. Uh, but because it's Florida, it's June, and you know there's many things to do down in Florida in the summer, uh, besides bake and get tremendous sunburn. Um, she comes down with me to that trip. She works the tables with me for the day, and then we will take like a five day little vacation down in the Orlando Kissimmee area uh, before we head home. Um, I drive. I'm a big driver. Um, you know, I probably do anywhere from forty to fifty thousand miles. Um, 40 to 50,000 miles, um, a year, uh, just in my car, uh, traveling the United States. Um, 
I, I'm not a big fan of flying, but you know, if I have to, like I was just at in California for WrestleCon, I did fly there last year. I was in Texas. I did fly there, but I drive pretty much everywhere else. But yeah, we have, uh, we have the aforementioned, uh, Thunder Rosa. She will be joining us on June 10th at river city wrestling con along with a damaged 365 exclusive client, um, former WWE star, Matt Morgan, he will be there as well. And then just uh, announced yesterday, uh, doing her first public convention signing since 2016, uh, formerly known as Sarita uh, from Impact Wrestling, Sarah Stock, who now is a, uh, um, a trainer and coach with AEW. Uh, she also did that with WWE prior to the pandemic. So we're, um, we're very excited, you know, to get uh, these – three talents out there signing some autographs. Matt Morgan doesn't do a lot of signing. Um, you know, as uh, people know, he's a a mayor of a small town in Florida. So, you know, he's kind of wrapped up with, uh, his busy schedule and, uh, you know, Thunder Rosa is, is a, is a household name now. So, uh, we got to get out there and, and have a reconnect with her fans. And, uh, she touches the lives of, of a lot of uh, young fans and inspiring uh, professional wrestlers, you know, and people always picking her brain, talking to her, you know, um, I don't get involved in the conversations, but I'm sure a lot of it is, you know, how do you deal with everything that you deal with? And, you know, she, she gives the advice to the young fans and to the young wrestlers that all come up to her and ask her and, and, uh, and talk to her. And then uh, Sarah stock as well, I'm sure is going to have a lot of questions, you know, about, her career now with AEW and thing and what she used to do with WWE and, and, you know, her back on the, uh, the market, but I'm, um, I'm happy, you know, I'm just happy to get some familiar faces out there and we pride ourselves on bringing in some newer, fresher faces, some obscure names that aren't doing the, the convention scene every single show, 40 times a year, every year, uh, all of the Greg to have Valentine. We're trying to, you know, no, and no disrespect to the hammer. We love the hammer, but um, Greg, Greg brings himself to shows now. So, you know, <laughs> every time we, we walk into a show, it's great. Hey, Greg. And, you know, it gives you the wave. But, um, you know, we, we try to keep it fresh because if you if you want talent to stay in demand, you, you can't oversaturate the market. And that's something else a lot of these newer vendors and promoters are going to have to learn that uh, you can't you can't saturate the market for your own personal benefit. And some of the older carny promoters that, you know, like to call themselves the OGs or the godfathers or the founding fathers of promoting, uh, that's what they like to do. They like to bring in a certain talent or two or whatever and saturate the market with it to the point where no one else can use that talent because they have zero value. But what they don't realize is that they're hurting the value and the resale value of the actual talent. So it's not just your, yeah, you're giving a dig to your fellow promoters because they can't use the talent, but now that talent's not getting booked because there's just nowhere else to bring them because you've brought them everywhere in a small amount of time and you've actually crushed the resale value of that talent. So we try not to do that. Thunder Rosa is a household name. She could go anywhere and draw a crowd. Doesn't matter. She could walk into a taco stand and she'll have 15 little girls come around her, you know, picking her brain, trying to take pictures with her. You know, she's the hero. Um, but as far as like Matt Morgan, he doesn't do a lot of signings. We want to get him out there. Sarah Stock hasn't done a signing in seven years. We want to get her out there. But we're going to pick and choose the spots so they're not oversaturated. Now, if they pick to choose to do signings elsewhere, you know, on their own, I mean, obviously that's that's on them, but they're educated in the value of themselves. Well said. Well said. Anyway, what's this rumor I'm hearing about uh, you having something to do with Andre the Giant? Um. Yeah, man. He's uh. He's like my uncle. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't get any of the genetics. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, in conjunction with Titan Championship Wrestling, Goddesses of War Wrestling, uh, the Rankin Museum of American Heritage, which is in Ellerby, North Carolina, and people who don't know, Andre the Giant had a farm 
in this small town of Ellerbury, North Carolina. This is where he lived and actually where um, he was when he eventually passed away. The caretaker of his property donated uh, whatever he had, personal belongings-wise, to the Rankin Museum of uh, American Heritage. So a lot of his items are there at the museum. Like any other museum, museums are not there for profit. You know, they do not make money. It doesn't matter if it's the American Museum, the Natural History in Manhattan, the Smithsonian in Washington. It don't matter. They don't really make money. They rely on donations from um, corporations and the public to survive. They're not relying on ticket sales of you walking in. A lot of them are free when you walk in. So that obviously they're not relying on um, you walking in and buying a magnet. So it, they get their money from donations. So in this case, you know, we're running a show, uh, which is also in conjunctions with Leland's auctions to do a giant celebration and a giant tribute to Andre the Giant in the town where he lived and to help um, collect proceeds to donate to the Rankin Museum of American Heritage. We are going to be doing a convention. Well, first there's going to be a museum tour. And then followed by that in the museum, there's going to be a convention with multiple uh, former WWF superstars that worked with Andre the Giant. We just announced one yesterday is former tag team partner where they were the WWF tag team champions, uh, the Colossal Connection, that's Haku. And we have many more. We also have some Impact wrestlers that are going to be on the wrestling show that night, uh, which is going to be right there in the streets, right in front of the Rankin Museum. So it's going to be a great full day of activities between the tour, the convention, uh, the wrestling show. There's going to be food trucks. There's going to be beer trucks. Uh, there's just, there's going to be live music. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is uh, on August 12th in LRB, North Carolina. Again, go to titan-championshipwrestling.com uh, to pick up tickets to the wrestling show. The tickets to the convention will be sold at the museum the day of. And, um, and trust me, when I say the talent that we're bringing out is going to be um, – a very direct link to Andre the Giant. So it's going to be a, a very great show. His daughter um, will also be there. She'll be signing autographs, meeting with fans, uh, telling stories. Uh, the talent that we're bringing in is also going to be telling stories about their, their, um, you know, their life with Andre on the road or in the ring. We, we even have um, a local wrestler, Chuck Coates, who wrestled as a, um, um, I don't want, I don't like to use the, the job a word, but, um, he, re- he wrestled with WWF back in the day and he wrestled Andre on numerous occasions. So he's going to come down, he's going to share some stories and, you know, he'll be signing some autographs and stuff like that. So it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. It's, it's a good event. It's, it's going to be a fun event. And like I said, uh, proceeds from everything from the table sales to the convention sales to the wrestling show sales uh, all pro- proceeds are going to the Rankin Museum of American Heritage. Uh, it's our way of giving back to to the museum in the name of Andre the Giant. And, um, you know, hopefully it brings a little more exposure to the small town and to the museum and gets uh, it gets it to become a destination spot for some people because, you know, it's only a couple hours from Charlotte or um, I think it was like two and a half hours from Indiana so it's it's not that far from multiple hot spots. So it could be a cool destination place to go check out, uh, not just for you know the American heritage uh, pieces that they're they're housing there, but because of the uh, the Andre the Giant memorabilia and personal items. I mean, you you got a full plate, man. I don't know how you do it, but again, living, breathing Swiss Army knife, Kevin. <laughs> Got a lot of respect and, and, and appreciation for you, man. You keep doing what you're doing out there. If if there's anyone listening that wants to get in touch with you, um, not just to follow what's going on, but also, you know, there could be some some wrestlers who may want to be represented by you or mm-hmm. send in their stuff, possibly get booked by you at the uh, promotion. What's the best way people can reach you? Uh, best way to reach me is uh, email damage365 radio at gmail.com. Uh, you can also message us through our website, d365promotions.com. 
Um, we're on Twitter, Damage 365 Radio. We're on Facebook, Damage 365. Instagram, uh, D365 underscore promotions. Uh, we're, we're, we're pretty much on every social media platform. Um, you know, the easiest way is either email or through the Facebook, uh, through the, uh, the website, there's a, you know, a contact us feature there. Uh, usually, I mean, unless you're messaging me in the middle of the night there's usually like a 30 minutes. Um, I think our, our uh, response time on the website says about 30 minutes, which is, which is usually very accurate. Like I said, unless, uh, it's in the middle of the night because I'm, I'm usually up to about two or three, two to three AM on the Eastern, uh, Eastern time. So, um, you know, if you're messaging me at like six o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm, I'm not answering you until I wake up. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I do need to sleep. I got to recharge this battery. As, uh, as Duke said, I, uh, I do a lot of things. So, uh, I had to recharge the battery, but, uh, yeah, I mean, um, Look, uh, I've never been called a Swiss Army knife. I, I've, I've, I, I kind of like that. Um, my father would would definitely love that because that was like one of the first gifts my father ever gave me as a kid that uh, my my mother didn't approve of, but I loved, which was a Swiss Army knife. I was a Boy Scout, um, Eagle Scout, nineteen ninety three, Troop seven ninety one, Staten Island, New York. Uh, so I'm, I'm a lover of the Swiss Army knife. I actually still have my father's. Um, put away uh as as a memory to him so he uh he always loved the swiss army knife i'm an army brat my father was a vietnam vet so you can see why i have a lot of this organization uh driven mindset it's uh it's it's between between him and my mother's retail background i I, like i said i've been i've been molded into this uh this machine that can't sit still for more than 25 seconds without going oh my god what can i do now what did i tell you you know just fantastic inf- information you know kevin is a, is a good dude really enjoyed that conversation and i hope you gained something from it uh it's important it's important to to know some of that stuff and it, and it just goes to show there are far more opportunities in wrestling if you're willing to put your skills to the test and and go find them you know you don't just have to be a pro wrestler there's a lot of other things going on You know, pro wrestling needs accountants and pro wrestling needs managers. Pro wrestling needs people who are organized, right? Pro wrestling needs people who know how to book and who understand how to how to do finance and things like that. There's so many other opportunities out there uh, for anyone who is serious about making it happen. You know, one of the funny things that just that just occurred and and. Let me lead with this. Congratulations to Will Washington. Will Washington is a longtime podcaster. Most recently, he was with the Grapsity podcast and affiliated with Fightful. Uh, Will just got hired by AEW. Tony Khan and Tony Khan described all the duties that Will will have in the company, and it, it looks like he's essentially going to be uh, an assistant to Tony, where. I'm assuming he's going to be sitting under Tony's learning tree and learning how to basically operate AEW. And it's interesting. What an opportunity to learn from such a a powerful, creative, experienced person like Tony Khan. You know, someone who consistently makes sense with how they manage their company in, in AEW. And that's exactly why AEW is such a massive force in pro wrestling today because Tony Khan is so brilliant. The fact that Will Washington will be able to sit under the learning tree of, of, of that level of brilliance, you know, get to learn how someone can have the type of budget, you know, over a hundred million dollars like AEW has had and how they manage that, you know, all in all the other things that they do, you know, video games and stuff like that. Um, it'll be it'll be a, a, a real experience for a guy like Will Washington to be able to soak up such incredible knowledge, right? And that just goes to show that if you work hard out there, folks, and especially if, if you go out of your way to ensure that wherever you want to go, that there isn't any friction, right? 
that you don't criticize and that you make sure that you go after their competitors and things of that nature, um, that you overlook controversial things. You know, Tony saying some disparaging things about Big Swole. You know, you kind of gloss over that and you don't you don't push too hard on that because you don't want to upset the apple cart. If you work hard in that regard, if you play the game time to play the game, you can one day be like Will Washington where you'll have the opportunity to get unlimited hugs from Tony Khan. So congratulations to Will. He's a prime example of what we're talking about here. The opportunities are there if you're willing to put in the hard work and do the difficult things that most people, quite frankly, would not do. You know what I mean? Most people would just not do these things. But if you're willing to 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 take that extra step, go the extra mile like Will Washington has done. Look at the reward. Literally sitting under the learning tree of Tony Khan. Indeed. OK, thank you once again, folks. As always, be kind to yourselves and be kind to others. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're definitely out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.